Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Teach Them Diligently 365 this week. I am very excited as we are looking at how to be prepared for homeschooling that we're going to talk to our homeschool guidance counselor this week about how to be prepared to homeschool high school. And we're going to look at a lot of those big questions that I know plague us all as we could steal our nerves that we can handle this next big challenge. So I want you to welcome with me Felicia Masonheimer, who is our homeschool guidance counselor. Uh, so Felicia, if you will say hello to everybody, tell us a little bit about yourself so that we know where you're coming from. Well, Leslie, thank you. Again, my name is Felicia Masonheimer, and I am TTD's homeschool guidance counselor. And in this role, I get to help homeschool families make decisions for high school and kind of navigate that very complicated path to college or to trade school or wherever their calling is. Now, my personal history with homeschooling goes way back. I was homeschooled from first grade through high school graduation. I'm the oldest of six homeschooled kids, and my mom is still homeschooling my youngest two siblings. Uh, my husband was also homeschooled, and we plan to homeschool our own kids. So we have kind of a homeschool dynasty going on. But in my experience as a homeschool student, when I got to high school and then started looking at going to college, I found it a very confusing process. And I know that my mom was confused too. She didn't really have much direction. She was kind of feeling in the dark for what she was supposed to do and what she needed to give me and to set me up for success. And she didn't have a lot of the resources that exist today to help her do that. I then went on to work as a senior admissions counselor and homeschool recruiter at Liberty University, and I was there for five years. And in that capacity, I began to see that I wasn't the only homeschooler who struggled that way. There were many other homeschool families who were navigating this same confusing time period, asking a lot of questions, and colleges weren't giving them the information that they needed because they didn't understand how homeschooling works. And so I was able to bridge that gap while I was at Liberty, and now I am able to help bridge that gap wherever families want to send their students now that I work for Teach Them Diligently. Yay, thank you for giving us a little insight there. Well, let me ask you first of all, like I mentioned before, this is a daunting task. Um, I was really, really nervous about it. Now I find myself with three of those high school kids in my family. Um, but who can homeschool high school? Is there some magic bullet that you need to be able to do this? I honestly think anyone can homeschool high school with the right tools, the right planning, and the right support because there's so much out there to truly help you navigate this season. It is scary. It is intimidating to look at it given that what you do in high school does largely open or close doors mm -hmm. after high school, but there is plenty of opportunity to try new things, to try and fail even, and pick yourself back up and walk with your student out of high school and into graduation. Most of the time when people are worried about ruining their children or their education, um, it shows me that they care enough to not ruin their child's education. They're, if they're worried about it, they're probably doing a pretty good job. They're probably trying to find the resources that they need. And the wonderful thing is that there are so many resources, opportunities, and support groups available to you as you are walking this path. So as intimidating as it is, I would say it's very possible to homeschool high school successfully. Um. Well, thank you for that. I, I think that the part that resonated with me most is knowing that if we're worried about it, we are probably concerned enough to make sure that we don't ruin their, their education. And that's a tidbit I think we, all of us homeschool moms can kind of chew on for a little while as uh, just kind of letting that soothe our hearts and encourage them. Um, well, you mentioned resources. What kind of resources are you alluding to that are really, really helpful as we homeschool high school? Well, I'm talking in rather general terms here because I could list off all of the curriculum that are out there and the truth is that every student has different gifts and skills and struggles and so certain curricula will work for one student that won't work for another. And so when I talk about resources, yes, that would include specific curriculum, but I'm more talking in general terms such as co-ops, online classes, tutors, all of these things are available to support you as you are teaching your students. And high schoolers are largely self-taught. 
in homeschool. So you're kind of guiding them into their skill set and bolstering them up in their weak areas, as opposed to teaching them every day the way you might have had to do when they were six and seven and 10. So in high school, you can bring in these other people to help you as you are walking this path. So a co-op would be a great example of this, where you bring somebody in or you bring your students in to be taught by somebody who is better at biology than maybe you are. I know that when we get to the season where my daughter is in high school, I will not be teaching math. I will be finding somebody to teach math or utilizing an online class because you can find online classes through your community colleges, state universities, private Christian universities, and curriculum companies who all offer specific online classes if that format works for your student. You can also find tutors for weak areas. This is an area I think a lot of homeschoolers overlook, but tutors are an excellent resource because if you tend to get frustrated as you're teaching a high school level uh, course, or you don't feel equipped to come alongside them in that way, you can find another homeschool student or another homeschool parent, or even somebody at the local community college to tutor your student in that subject so that they can succeed and they do get that personal attention. Yeah, when, um, or, or for our family, we utilize a lot of those different resources. Um, I did a video in February, I think it was, on co-op. So I'm going to link to that down below um, just to make sure if you missed it, you can see it. Because we talk a lot about how the co-op adds a level of accountability, a level of having someone else have deadlines, um, and really just the, the presenting skills and all of those different things that are a little bit harder to um, to incorporate into a traditional homeschool is a very nice segue to the next level for your children. So um, make sure you check out that video to get uh, some really good information about why co-op is a great option for high school if that's available to you. Um, but we have tried online courses. We've done a lot of different things because I think that one of the great great things about um, homeschooling high school is you're able to get them familiar with a lot of different applications, a lot of different platforms, so that as they mature and grow and take the next step, they are very well equipped for whatever life throws their way. And that's, that's something that we can give them that is just a real gift. Um, one other thing I wanted you to make sure you talked about, though, was the Homeschool Guidance Counselor Program, Felicia. So if you can give just a little idea of what that is, that would be awesome. Yes. So Homeschool Guidance Counselor is, in a way, me, but it's also a program. And the nice thing is, is that the program will exist for as long as it's going to run, which hopefully is a very, very long time. <laughs> and it will always be accessible to you when I am not accessible. So what this is, is that it is having all the resources that I would generally give verbally or via email come to you via your inbox. I have made videos that are now recorded and housed within the program. You get monthly emails according to your student's grade in high school, so ninth through 12th grade, telling you what to be thinking about next. And I wrote all of these emails myself. So that's 48 emails for one for each month of the year for all four years of high school. <laughs> so you get one for every month. And in October of their ninth grade year, I might say, consider taking a practice PSAT because this will prepare your student for standardized tests. So it gives you kind of a heads up of what to be thinking about in very general terms that you can then personalize to your students. And so if you want to access this, you can go to Teach Them Diligently 365. Leslie will tell you what the link is for that. And you can sign up for it there. And it just gives you access to all those videos as well as that email program and a private Facebook group where you can ask questions and join me for weekly live videos as well. Yes, it is. Um, that, that program is really, really helpful for me as a homeschool mom because one of the things I think that all of us deal with is a lot of insecurity. What are we missing? What are we not seeing? What are we not thinking of? And Felicia has made it possible to where you you honestly have a checklist of things that you need to be making sure you're getting to every single month of every single year of high school. So if you have not signed up for that program yet, do it now. There's a link down below in the resources, but it, if, if you move away from here and you just want to get back to it, go to teachthemdiligently365.com and there's a button for it. And just sign up. It's free. We'll send you a quick start guide and then a lot of incredible content going forward. Um, in addition, though, to the resources, Felicia, I know that from, 
for me, I try to stay very, very on top of what are the requirements, what are the laws, that kind of thing, because I don't want to be caught off guard. How do you recommend that we stay up on that? And, um, you know, why is that even important? This is a great question because I hear about it a lot at our homeschool conventions. Usually what I recommend is checking your Department of Education website for what the minimal graduation requirements are for high school. This is the best place to start because they generally keep the government website up to date and current with what the requirements would be as they change because they do change. And Leslie and I were talking about this before we started the video that the requirements in every state may change year to year or every few years. And so if you just check them at the beginning of freshman year and you don't look at them again until senior year, you could be attempting to graduate a student with requirements that aren't current. This happened in high school for me where Michigan, where it's just where I grew up, um, changed their foreign language requirements. When I graduated high school in 2008, I did not need a foreign language. I had one, but I didn't need one to graduate. But the next year when my sister graduated, she had to have two years of foreign language, two full credits of foreign language. And my mom had to stay current on that in order to know that she could graduate me but she couldn't graduate my sister. And so my sister had to go to the community college and take French for a year in order to graduate. So those are, that's an example of the shift that can happen that quickly with the Department of Education requirements. But you have some freedom there depending on your state. You can look at those requirements and then they might say three credits of science in order to graduate high school, but they'll give you some guidelines of what those sciences might be, but then you have freedom within that to pick your curricula and, and decide where to go from there. Certain states like New York, Pennsylvania, you're going to have many more requirements to fill out, but typically they have somebody that you're in contact with for those requirements and they can give you guidance as well. Right, right. Um, I know I ran into the same thing. Uh, there have been just, there are minor changes really, but they would be important if I wasn't staying up on them. So I, as I was telling you, I'm one of the very neurotic people. I check it at the first of every year, at the end of every year, and generally somewhere in the middle, just because it takes me two seconds to look at it. And it calms my heart just knowing, okay, we are on track. All is well, they're, they're going the way that they should be. Um, because like you said, I don't want to do anything that is going to shut a door for my children down the road. So I want to make sure that Everything I am doing is above reproach and as excellent as I can do it for their sake. Um, one other question I wanted to throw out to you is how important is it um, if you are a college bound student to, or, or I guess when should you start looking at what requirements are for colleges? Because sometimes I know that is not exactly in line with what your state's requirements may be. It depends on the college that you're looking at. So if you're looking at some Ivy League colleges like Princeton, Yale, Harvard, the entrance requirements are much more rigorous than many private Christian universities or even your state universities. So if you are looking at attending certain colleges, definitely look at those requirements as early as late 10th grade and early 11th grade because you want to have time to get those classes added in if you need them to vie for a place at that particular school. Generally though, at most universities, state universities, Christian universities, whatever your state requires for graduation is what they're looking for, but they're looking for those good grades and higher test scores, if not for entrance, at least for scholarship money. So that's why tests and good GPA are important in the long run. I know sometimes for high schoolers, it's like, why on earth does this even matter? But it does matter because the higher your GPA and your test scores, the more scholarship money is available to you to help pay for college. So if they are college bound, I would encourage looking at those requirements in late 10th, early 11th grade, if you know what colleges you're looking at. If you don't really know, start looking and just peruse different colleges requirements for admission or for applying to the university. And it'll give you an overview of what they're looking for. 
Yeah, and a great way to do that actually is to attend our college fair at Teach Them Diligently, because um, that'll give you access to several schools where you can just kind of talk to their guidance counselors or their admissions counselors, see, get a good idea for what is what these colleges are looking for. Um, so definitely take a look at that as well. Now, our time is up. And I think that you all would agree with me that there's about six trillion more questions that we want to have answered. Um, but this is why you need to join that Homeschool Guidance Counselor program because we can't cover everything in a 10 to 12 minute interview. And Felicia knows so, so much. Um, but Felicia, thank you for joining us. And thank you so much for all the stuff that you've written to help our families out with this high school journey. Oh, you're welcome. It's a privilege to work with everybody. <laughs> well, you guys, go join that program, learn as much as you can, and take heart that you absolutely can homeschool high school because anything God calls you to do, he will equip you to do. Have a great week. If you enjoyed this video, you've got to check out Teach Them Diligently 365. Every week, there are even more thorough videos and chats about things that are interesting to you year-round.